Hi there, this is my fourth video response to Venom Access video series called Satan Invented Evolution. In this video, we will be talking about his third video in which he talked about abiogenesis and macroevolution. Like I said in my first video, the primary goals of my videos are not to debunk his arguments but to show you guys where I think he's being dishonest. And in this particular video, I can have a field day in doing that. There are so many instances in this video where he embellishes his words just to make things seem worse than they are. But in doing so, he is totally betraying his own ignorance of science. There are things he said which someone that is knowledgeable of science will never say. So today, I'll be correcting a lot of his language. And at times, it might seem like I'm a science teacher. And yes, today, I'll be a science teacher. I'll be, I'll be very strict and nitpick on everything he say. Okay, let us start. He began by saying that abiogenesis is the idea that life came from non-living material and that that idea has been proven wrong for over 200 years. I don't know where he got his history lesson from or maybe he has a, he has a problem with arithmetic but 200 years? No, no, over 200 years, so more than 200 years. The origin, the origin of species from Darwin was published 150 years ago and Miller's experiment, which he will mention later, is co was conducted in the 1950s, so 200 years. Um, this is exactly what I meant when, he, when, when I said that he embellishes his words just to make things seem worse than they are. Because even if abiogenesis has been proven wrong, it has only been proven wrong since Miller's experiment, which was conducted uh, about 50 years ago. And note, if you watch the rest of his video, he never explained where he got that number from. So if you're going to arbitrarily use a, use a number, why don't you say 300 years or 500 years or 2000 years? Also, I want to correct his language. He uses the term non-living material. I have objections to that. Um, how does he define non-living material? It is, it is a little bit misleading to use the term non-living material because um, living implies that um, the material is somehow sentient, as if this, they are sentient material and non-sentient materials. Signs do not distinguish between those two. All material are non-living, in the sense that all material react passively to its environment. If he is talking about material that living organisms use, then the correct term will be organic and inorganic material or matter. Okay, why do I object to the use of the word non-living material? First of all, science do not use this term. If you check, if you check the Miller's experiment on Wikipedia, you will not find this term being used. It says, to synthesize organic compounds from inorganic precursors. Secondly, when you say living and non-living material, it implies that there, are, there is something fundamentally different between living and non-living material. I mean, as if God himself must come down and use, use his breath of life on non-living material to make it living. No, no, no. Organic and inorganic materials are all made of elements that, that, is, that is found in the periodic system. They are not that fundamentally different. Again, this is exactly what I meant when I say that he embellishes his words to make things sound worse than they are. Next, he talked about Miller's experiment, which we already mentioned. I'm not going to go into details into that because other users has already made great videos about it. One in particular is from Potholder54, or is it Potholder? Anyways, his video is called Origin of Life Made Easy, and I will link you guys to it, and he can explain it way better than I can. To summarize what he said, basically, Miller's experiment, although the pioneer work, is no longer the the evidence that we base the ideas of, of abiogenesis from. I do want to correct uh, Venom from X's use of language though. Uh, take a look at this when he's, he's talking about uh, amino acids. Water has a way, liquid has a way of also ruining the, uh, the bonds between left-handed amino acids. So, Did you hear that? Water, uh, liquid, has a way of ruining the bonds of L amino acids. This is exactly what I meant when I say that he embellishes his words just to make things sound worse than they are. And in this case, by doing so, he has made a complete fool of himself. Is he trying to tell us that all liquid is water? That water is synonymous to liquid? Or is he trying to tell us that all liquid, 
no matter what the molecular structure is, has a tendency to destroy the bonds, the bonds of amino acids. Also, he said, also he said, uh, has a way of ruining the bonds of our amino acids. This is kind of vague. I mean, what bonds? Uh, which bonds? Is it the amine bond, or is it the uh, the carboxylic acid bond, or maybe the amine bond of the peptide, or the intermolecular bonds between the amino acids themselves? You have to be you have to be specific. The truth is. Water can hydrolyze the peptide bond of amines, but that is an acid catalyzed reaction or a base catalyzed reaction. In pH neutral water, this reaction runs very, very slowly. And even if a peptide, a peptide is hydrolyzed, it is hydrolyzed into uh, a amino acids. Next, he talked about entropy. I'm not going to go into details into en about entropy because um, this issue has been beaten to death by creationists. This is the creationists' favorite law because they love to abuse the true meaning of it. I do want to show you guys something though, which is proof that Venom X is totally ignorant about science. Take a look at this. Take a look at how Venom X defines the second law of thermodynamics. This law in physics states that all systems, whether open or closed, have a tendency towards disorder. Did you hear that? I couldn't believe my ears when I first heard it, so let us play the clip again to make sure that he indeed said what he said. This law in physics states that all systems, whether open or closed, have a tendency towards disorder. Open or closed? <laughs> Sorry, um, it's a cheap shot, I know, but I just couldn't resist myself. But in all seriousness, the second law only applies to closed system. Anyone who understands the true essence of this, of this law will never make such a noob mistake. Next, he talked about the, the analogy of the coin toss. Scientists used the analogy of the coin toss to describe abiogenesis, saying that yes, abiogenesis is improbable, but it is not impossible. Just like um, tossing a coin and get heads 20 times in a row is improbable, but it is not impossible given enough time. He claims that this energy is false because abiogenesis is simply impossible. Even time cannot make the impossible possible. But why? Why is it a false energy? I don't understand. What in a living cell cannot be constructed using inorganic compounds that we can find in nature? Does a living cell contain an element that we cannot find in the periodic system? The, the energy is like this. The true energy of the living cell is like this. Part A fitting to part B and that fits to part C, and that fits to part D, and that etc, 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 until you have a million parts all fitting together. And not only that, but fitting together in that exact order. Yes, that is very improbable, but it is not inherently impossible. His analogy of, of the coin getting wings and fly away is just like saying that the carbon dioxide molecule, the molecule itself, must spread wings and fly away in order to make a living cell. I mean, that is just simply ridiculous. There is nothing inherently impossible about abiogenesis. It is just relatively improbable. Anyways, that was my video. To summarize, Venom X loved to twist a little bit here and there to, to make things sound worse than they are. But by doing so, he is totally betraying his own ignorance of science. The mistakes he makes will not be made by anybody that is truly knowledgeable about, about science. In my next video, we will be talking about uh, macroevolution and the arguments used to debunk it. So stay tuned and thank you for watching my video.